there are a lot of ways that insulin resistance happens. Okay, one of the ways is simply insulin receptors not receiving insulin very well, right? There's also not producing as much insulin or even producing too much insulin. It's very, very webbed. There's a lot of different pieces to it. But there's now evidence surrounding calcium. Now, I've done videos on magnesium. Magnesium is huge, huge insulin resistance benefits. But the evidence with calcium is particularly unique because it has to do with the appetite piece, but also has to do with insulin receptors directly inside the actual cell itself. So I'm going to get into the details. I gave you what it is. It's calcium. I'm not going to dangle the carrot anymore. But if you don't mind, drop a comment real quick for the algorithm. It does help things out quite a bit. It gets these videos out in front of people. And I want to be able to explain in this video how calcium actually works, but also how to use it in this particular case for insulin resistance. Because it's not like you just take it with sugar or something to counteract it, like you might with magnesium or with allulose. It's a little bit more nuanced than that. So we'll explain the details of it. We'll talk about the research. The mechanisms and how it works. I also put a link down below for my favorite probiotic, which people always ask me what it is. It's seed. It's the only probiotic that I'd recommend. And the reason I mentioned even relevant to this video is our gut health actually plays a huge role in insulin resistance. And a lot of us forget that, ranging from the inflammatory response of lipopolysaccharides, but also just the fact that when you have a diverse microbiome, you end up with more of these short chain fatty acids that can support glucose metabolism at a cellular level. So yes, the gut health matters. I put a link down below for 25% off Seed's Daily Symbiotic. Big fan of them. Appreciate their support of this channel for so many years. Also something that I take daily. So link is down below in the top line of the description. What's funny is that insulin always gets a bad rap. Insulin is our friend. It's when insulin is chronically high because it can't actually bind to the right places that it's problematic. It's like you would hate your car too if your car would never let you pull into the driveway, right? So if you were always driving your car around and every time you try to turn into your driveway, your car would just accelerate and drive you down the road, you'd eventually get irritated with your car. But it's not your car's actual problem, right? It's the fact that like maybe you can't pull into your driveway. I don't know. Point is, is it's a random analogy, but it's the way we kind of demonize insulin when it's not the insulin's the problem. It's the fact that the insulin can't do its job right. Insulin's good. Insulin will actually go into the brain and it actually suppresses what's called orexigenic neurons. Orexigenic neurons are what make your brain want to eat food. Hey, I'm hungry. Kick it on. It's like when your brain's lit up, right? So you see something delicious in front of you, the brain lights up and you're like, give it to me, give it to me, right? That's an orexigenic signaling. Now the next is gonna be satiety signaling neurons or orexinogenic signaling neurons. Okay, so these are gonna be ones that when they are stimulated, they make you more satiated. Now what's interesting is that calcium can play a role with how insulin affects these neurons. Because insulin, in a perfectly good situation, gets into the brain in some ways and it actually triggers these changes to occur. It changes our brain chemistry so that we want less food. It, it makes sense. We got our food so the brain says, I don't need to eat anymore. But if you're insulin resistant, this doesn't happen the same. It's a huge problem. So with this, we look at a study that was published in hypertension that was done in humans. And it was really interesting. What they did is they gave subjects a standard diet with 500 milligrams of calcium for four weeks. And then after that four week period, they put them on an eight week additional protocol where they either took the uh, calcium out of the way entirely, so no calcium supplementation, or 1500 milligrams of calcium. What they found was that the calcium ended up restoring their insulin sensitivity, decrease their insulin resistance, increase their sensitivity, and overall decrease total fasting insulin levels, which means their chronic high circulating insulin that's causing an insulin resistance issue went down and they were able to actually restore normal insulin function to a certain degree. Now, the reason that this happens is when calcium in the diet is low, it causes calcium in the cell to go up. It's called intracellular calcium. And it's a unique kind of phenomenon where low dietary calcium increases cellular calcium. The intracellular calcium actually interferes with the insulin receptors. So when insulin receptor substrate is disrupted, insulin can't dock properly. So it just continues and moves along and it remains in the bloodstream. Chronically high insulin, also known as 
hyperinsulinemia, which is where we have the issues. Furthering the insulin resistance because the insulin's floating around and the cells are just getting numb to it because like, there's insulin again, he's just cruising around doing his thing, right? So they're so used to insulin, they no longer respond to it. Now another study, and I've talked about this a number of times, it was published in the Proceedings and Nutrition Society. And in this case, they gave subjects 500 milligrams of calcium mixed into their orange juice along with breakfast or a placebo in their orange juice. And they found that those that had the calcium ended up consuming 116 less calories at lunch, demonstrating that calcium has like this appetite effect too. So not only is there a direct effect on insulin itself and insulin receptors, but there's also an appetite effect. So the reason this appetite effect is important is because the body's trying to get adequate calcium. Calcium is required for muscle contraction, for signal transduction, for heartbeat. Without calcium, we'd be dead. So it makes sense that the body says, get enough calcium, and when it gets enough calcium, it can shut down appetite to a certain degree. It makes perfect, logical, and even energetic sense, right? Well, it's interesting because we're also seeing that calcium directly stimulates lipolysis. So it actually can trigger a fat cell to donate, get rid of its fatty acids so that they can burn. So it increases lipolysis, which means the fat cell gets smaller. When a fat cell gets smaller, you have less adipose tissue, which is therefore going to improve insulin signaling too. More fat tissue equals more what are called adipokines, which are inflammatory molecules that are secreted by the fat cell that get in the way of insulin to do its job. So on many levels, we've directly and indirectly improved the insulin signaling. Quick recap on how to consume calcium though. I don't recommend taking more than like 1,000 milligrams in a supplement form. Even though some studies will say 1,500 milligrams did the trick for weight regain and things like that, I still think 500 to 1,000 is like where you wanna be and you wanna do it in the morning, okay? Additionally, I would highly recommend people do more of a dietary calcium approach, eggshells, fish that have some bones in it, like sardines, hard aged cheeses, good quality uh, milk, or A2 quality milk, or cottage cheese, right? Good sources of calcium, appetite suppressant effects, and potential effects when it comes down to insulin resistance. So again, you don't wanna just be throwing a bunch of calcium supplements. They can be bad if you're dealing with like atherosclerosis or you're worried about coronary artery calcium scores. There's even like suggestions from the American Heart Association suggesting we don't wanna to have too much in the way of added calcium supplementation. So dietary calcium is the way or a low dose supplement in the morning. You don't need much to do the trick. As always, I'll see you tomorrow.